welcome, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Tell Me Your Story, where I get to interview talented artists from around the world, and we get to know them on a more personal basis. My name is Diego Montragón, and I started this channel to be able to give these talented artists a spotlight so that they could show their years and years of dedication to their art, and so that we can reach more viewers around the world. Today I'm very excited to have a personal friend of mine, an amazing bass player, and a very cool person, Nathan Brown. Let me tell you a little more about him. After experimenting with several instruments during his childhood and discovering that members of the opposite sex aren't interested in guys who played baritone horn, Nathan decided to take up electric bass. He began playing seriously at the age of 15 and has been tearing up the Detroit and LA music scenes ever since with this distinct brand of intelligent, funky jazz infused bass. Nathan has performed with some of the world's most eminent artists in jazz, blues, and soul, including Alexander Sonjic, Bob James, Kirk Whalum, Earl Klug, Kamau Kenyatta, Scott Wilkie, Randy Jacobs, and many, many more. Nathan has been heard holding down the bottom end on recordings by Coco Montoya, The Bone Shakers, Scott Wilkie, Kamau Kenyatta, Manette Marino, Bert Bryan, Deborah Galland, Patrick Yandel, Jason Weber, which just interviewed the other day. The One Ten Chronicles and One Two featuring Willie Nelson, Charles Musselwhite, Joe Eli, Aliades Choa, Adam Dirtis, Bill and Bonnie Hearn, Deborah Flores, and the names go on and on. Truly amazing. As part of the Coca Montoya band since 2008, Nathan has traveled extensively performing all over the US, Canada, UK, Spain, France, Italy, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany, Sweden, Holland, Russia, Norway, Poland, Brazil, and of course, Mexico, and more. In August of 2020, Nathan released a single, an original composition, composition titled Oxygen. It was his first release as a solo artist. In 2021, he followed up with the, his take on a classic hit by the Jacksons, This Place Hotel. In other words, Heartbreak Hotel. Nathan, my brother, how hey, are you? I'm good, man. It's good, good, good to be sitting here. Hey, man, it's an honor for yeah, me yeah. that we finally had you come in and, and yeah. we're able to, to uh, upgrade our system, our cameras. Now we have 4K cinema. Awesome, awesome. And we have this amazing little uh, recorder, Zoom recorder, and we'll be able to, to um, record you with high fidelity. So, awesome, awesome, man. I'm so, honored, honored to be here, man. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah. So, why don't we get started? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's start from the beginning. I know we, we, I read a little bit about your bio, but let's get a little more personal. Uh, when were you born and where were you born? Um, I was born uh, in Detroit. Um, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Feels weird to even say the year, but 1963 um, in Detroit is where I was born. Um, You're still um, a young man. Come on. You're still a young man. You look still good. Young man, you know, <laughs> You're looking good. Hang it in there. Hang it in there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, so Detroit, I've never, you know, I've never met anybody from Detroit, Michigan. Really? No. Wow. There's a lot of Californians. You know, transplants from Detroit. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. It, isn't it the like the city where it's famous for a car, the car industry? The auto industry, yeah, man. Yeah, that was industry. it. And Motown. Uh, Motown Records. And, you know, yeah, that started, that all kind of started there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, tell me about your family. Was it a musical family? How many brothers and sisters? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, a um, little bit of a musical family. My siblings, my siblings... Uh, dabbled in music, uh, probably uh, next to me, my brother would be next. He was played, uh, still plays trumpet and guitar, and uh, professionally. Uh, 
Not professionally. He, okay. he was smarter than myself. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, he still plays, and uh, he he was very very talented. My my younger sister played studied piano for a while. You know, we all as kids, and, mm-hmm. and my other sister played flute, and we've all kind oh, of nice. dabbled in different. Now, instruments. where do you fall in the order of birth? I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest. Oh, you are of uh, my siblings. Yeah. So, uh, did you have to um, set the example? Did your parents make you say like Nathan? You yeah. know, they didn't, and I probably was not a very good example. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, looking back, I, was, I probably was not a good example. Uh, but, uh, so you didn't have to uh, take care of them in any way or take them to school? or Not, not really. Um, for maybe a little while with my, with my brother and my, my sister, who's right up under me, uh, maybe just a little, just, okay. you know, kind of, you know, how brothers are protective of, of their, their sisters and, you know, was it a so, rough neighborhood or where did, did you live in the, yeah, man, we, we grew up in the inner city of Detroit, okay, which is comparatively a pretty, was a pretty rough thing, but we didn't, we didn't know that. It just was, it was normal. It was just life, you know, it's just how it was. Right. But yeah, I guess it was a pretty, um, pretty rough, uh, area in, in, uh, Comparatively, you know, mm-hmm. um, right in right in the middle of the heart of Detroit. And did you live um, in like a single family home or apartments or what, what kind of? A... So, so my my mom and dad uh, divorced pretty early. I think I was maybe two or three when they divorced. Um, so my I lived with my mom most of the time, and we kind of moved around. We had apartments. I think started off in an apartment, and eventually my mother. Right when I went to high school, she. She purchased a home, um, which is like right around the block, almost from my high school. So, oh wow, yeah. Um, so you were pretty young when they got divorced, then, huh? Yeah, I honestly don't ever remember them together. Oh wow, yeah. Okay. So I don't even know when it happened, but I figured since my sister's like two years younger than me, so I figured they had to at least been two years. Yeah. So how <laughs> so, many of you stayed? All of the kids stayed with with your mom. Well, so, so my, me and my sister um, stay with my mom, and then my other, my brother and my other sister uh, have a different mother. Okay. So, uh, but we're all very, very close knit families. So. And so your father was on his own, or? Yeah, he, he was he um, he was living on his own. Then he he eventually you know remarried, and mm-hmm. and then uh, his second wife is the mother of my brother and my younger sister. And uh, uh, and then when I was, I think in middle school, I went and lived with my father for a couple years. I see. Um, and so during that time is when I was saying I was probably a little bit, I wasn't a good example I to my, my, my little brother, but you know, <laughs> there to protect him anyway, but, uh-huh. but not probably not the best example. Uh, and, uh, and then starting high school, I went back to live with my mother. Um, uh, which was kind of cool because where my, you know, you, you get placed in school according to where you live. Okay. And that high school that I went to was a very good school for music, just happened to be. So wow. um, okay. that was that was sort of a, not planned, but it was a good thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, so did that affect you in any way uh, as you, as you um, developed as a young child and adolescent? As you your, mean? Your, your parents not being together or or i'm sure i'm sure it has and okay. i don't to what degree i don't know because it was just life to me like i yeah. said i don't remember them ever together mm-hmm. so it wasn't it didn't feel um like a loss although i do remember as when i was young sort of um you know sometimes you know people you know other kids with their mother and father and i kind of wish my dad was yeah you know. now now don't get me wrong. My dad was always around. Oh, nice. um, we we saw him every weekend. Was very involved. Spent the summers with them. So he was he mm-hmm. was always there, which is something that as I became a man, I began to uh, really respect because you know, he had a whole nother family and a whole mm-hmm. other thing going on. But he was always there, oh, always and, around. Well, that's that's um, I think a really important factor mm-hmm. where you know. Um, even though the family may be, um, you know, separated, 
there's still affection. There's still yeah. the presence there. Yeah, yeah. Which is the most important thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because then, as as children, you know, when we are loved and we have that that fatherly and motherly mm-hmm. love, we just grow to become better persons. Sure, and yeah. and just by knowing you, you are um, a very gentle, kind human Thank being. You. And you. I think that's you know I'm I'm always interested in in families and yeah. I, we'll we'll progress into your musical life yeah, as yeah, well yeah. but that's that's so important how we develop as yeah. human beings and believe me I, I I have a sense of people who are loved as children they they tend to be uh, kind kinder gentler people mm-hmm. with others you wow. know and I see that in you wow. so well, cool. so well, thank you yeah yeah. Very good. So let's talk about music. Uh, when did you first start to um, be interested in becoming? You mentioned you didn't want to play the baritone horn. <laughs> <laughs> that that was meant to be funny, but it's kind of true. It, it is true. Believe uh, me. I, <laughs> yeah. I, that, that was in true. middle school, or that was uh, yeah. So so like that wasn't a hundred percent true. It was just kind of a funny little anecdote. But yeah, so we as kids, you know, just kind of. You know, you get involved in sports, mm-hmm. music in school, and we all played different instruments. I, I played, uh, you know, not really played, but, you know, in school played trumpet. I played uh, drums or at least snare drum at one point. And, mm-hmm. uh, so was that an elective or is that something that you you had to do as part of the school program? You didn't have to do it, but we, we chose to do it. Okay. Um, so you I, chose band? Chose band, yeah. And then, yeah. you know... you find an instrument that fits you and everything yeah so uh but in middle school was interesting because i was i was playing the baritone horn um i don't even i don't think i don't know if i chose that or they just told me to they they needed yeah they they needed needed a body needed a body on i remember i played baritone i kind of liked it it's, it was, a, it's it a little of the three, three, uh, yeah, it's, valves like a, it's like a smaller tuba, right? And a little, yeah, 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 it, yeah. it's nice and light yeah, yeah. compared to a tuba, compared to a tuba, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, I didn't, you know, it was cool, it was fun. Um, but I was in school, um, in middle school playing the baritone when, uh, because of money reasons, they took uh, music out of school for oh, a while. Wow. Yeah, that was, what a, that shame. was a big blow. But we had a, we had a cool teacher that met with us at would offer to meet with us after school really even though he wasn't being paid anymore mm-hmm. and he kept meeting with us and so there was a we had a little and i played I, that was when I, I played bass i think a little then um for a program that they had um but i really wasn't it was just something else to do it was i didn't have the bug yet you know it hadn't really hit yeah. me but a lot of my friends in the neighborhood played guitars and drums and different things and so let's t- touch on, on this fact that you just brought up this teacher mm-hmm. who they, they took away the, the music program, but yet he decided to yeah. do some uh, music education after school. After school, yeah. And do you remember his name? And I, I, I don't. And I feel bad that I don't because I that's an, that, was a, that was a very significant thing that he did, man. And yeah. He um, talked to the parents and he's like, hey, if you still want to um, do this. And he got permission from somebody at the school yeah. that we could still meet in the school building. And he was not being paid. And, wow. he, and he tried to keep it going for as long as So Nathan, time. if you remember after this interview... Yeah. His name. I, 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 uh, I once the the video is out, I'd love it if you could put you know. I'm gonna look. Comments. I'm gonna look it up because because really it would be should cool remember. to, yeah. to yeah. recognize that because that those are the people that make a difference in in For our sure. lives. For know? sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So let's progress from that point. When did you become a bass player and started, you know, loving that instrument? Um. You know, it's it's a it's a little bit because I had, you know, we had instruments. You know, my dad was like, yeah, let me get you there. So my father is a big music enthusiast. He loved yeah. jazz, and he took us to all kinds of um, concerts and clubs when we were kids. I mean, mm-hmm. my father was a, a a sheriff, and so he would flash his badge to get us into places where we normally kids couldn't, couldn't uh, go. Uh-huh. So we were I was around music. From, oh, okay. So I was around that scene for so long. 
So um, if any of us even, you know, if you wanted a toy or something, my dad might give you a hard time about it. But if you wanted an instrument, it was there. Uh -huh. okay. And so we had instruments around. Um, and I had, a, I had a bass, but I, it was just one of the instruments for a while. And then when I was in high school, um, I had a job. There was a guy named Paul Stewart who was mm -hmm. uh, my supervisor at that job. And Paul Stewart was a bass player uh -huh. and, a, and a singer. And, you know, I'm just like, yeah, man, I play bass too, you know, you know that kind of thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. But he invited me to one of his shows. And that show kind of changed the, the direction of my life because when I saw him and heard him and how, how the bass was moving in the music in that band and it just did something to me mm -hmm. and I was like wow can you cool. put your finger on, on what that was with that the bass gave you know that that whole band or that experience that you that you uh, resonated yeah, with yeah I, I don't know because I, the the band had the it was an interesting band they were called the other brothers um, and <laughs> it, it was two brothers and they played uh One played, I think one played keyboards and flute and the other maybe played keyboards and saxophone or something. Anyway, I started off kind of focusing on the horns for some reason. I was really into it. But then I... Your baritone training, of course. Yeah, yeah, maybe that was it. <laughs> But man, when Paul was playing, he was, it was, there was something about the bass, the way it filled the room mm -hmm. and, the, and the way it just felt really good. And I was just like, wow. Was he the, the band leader? No, the other brothers, the two oh, brothers oh, okay. were the leader, okay. and he was he was just playing bass and maybe singing backup vocals mm -hmm. at the time. So and, it's just uh, that deep. It was you that know, deep thing, and, and it just felt like man, he's really? like it felt powerful. Yeah, and and the presence in the room, and um, so that got you right there. That got me. That was that's what kind of got me. And then so afterwards, after that show, we kind of now we what was out. this guy's name? Paul Stewart. Paul Stewart. Yeah, yeah. weren't you? Say a little something to Paul. Paul, and he's he knows we've we've talked. I've reached out to him, and we've talked about this since because we we kind of kind of lost touch after a while. Uh, but yeah, Paul, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Paul. See what you did. Thank you. Thank <laughs> See you. what you did. Yeah, yeah awesome. thank you very much. But yeah, Paul, Paul Stewart, man, and he Paul um, he was just really. He took me to his house, and we um, he showed me some things on bass, and I kind of I guess picked them up pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And so that was it, man. I just started running with you it. You started and, flying. Yeah. And then I, it became an obsession, you know. Wow. And uh, How old were you? I must have been maybe 15, I think. Okay. Maybe, I think 15, 15, somewhere in there, 16, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And that was, I was hooked, man. So a lot of woodshedding at that point? Yeah, home, it just, just it became an obsession, you know, like, like it was, when I think back, it was really an obsession because I would just, I would just walk, there was a music store uh, not too far from my house and I would just walk there and just look at the bases in the window. Uh -huh. Didn't have any money. For hours. Yeah, <laughs> didn't have any money, but I would go there just to look in the window at the, <laughs> it was a real obsession. And then, um. You know, uh, yeah, and I started to, uh, in school, uh, well, first I started just learning sort of songs by ear, mm -hmm. and then uh, they, they, of course, had a band in school, and I wanted to get in that band, but um, you had to be able to read at a certain level, and I could mm -hmm. read a little bit from the baritone, but it wasn't wasn't quite there, so I started taking some lessons. They think it was bass clef, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. I started taking some lessons, and And I got in the school band and um, played in our, our stage band at, at the high school. Electric bass or stand -up? Electric bass. Okay. But I also got in the orchestra as well. Good. On, good. On, uh, got to get a little classical. Got to get in that there. in there too. <laughs> and, uh, and then I had a, uh, joined a band with my friends out after school, you know, thing. And You, um, you, you created a band with some friends? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What did yeah. you guys start playing? Oh, but at that time, you know, like... Like like Prince was hot and Rick James and of course Earth Wind and Fire, of course. Um, uh, yeah, all of the kind of pop cameo that kind of funk okay. stuff, was, was, which was heavy bass, you know, uh -huh. that's uh -huh. what music was heavy bass influence. So um, yeah, so just kind of whatever the, the hot stuff, some Parliament, uh, okay, I remember that. stuff, and 
Uh, and we had a cool band. We won some talent shows around, you know, mm-hmm. the high school talent shows. We won a few yeah. of those. And were you getting paid for those? Or no, no, no. We fun? were just we were just playing just for fun. And, okay. Um, didn't didn't start getting paid until uh, I might have done a paid gig before I got out of high school. I don't, I don't think so. I don't remember. But well, that's a good segue. When when did you start? You know, your professional life as a bassist. Yeah, so <laughs> my first, what I call my first professional gig was playing gig. It was a guy named Levi Mann, and he was well known in Detroit. He was a, he was an organist, and he he led this band, and they played all of the sort of society parties they called them, and uh, mm-hmm. sort of I guess the equivalent of what we call corporate gigs, private corporate parties, gigs, and yeah. stuff like that. And he was well, really well known to the point where. He would have two parties going at the same night and he would just the two different bands and he would just go back and forth mm-hmm. and make appearances at each one and uh and my father uh was the the connection he got me hooked up with this with this guy levi man and it got me the sort of an audition so i went to the mm-hmm. rehearsal audition i played and, and everything was fine but the first gig i showed up late uh no way. And first and last game. <laughs> <laughs> I so hope you learned your lesson. That was the that was a good lesson right there, you know. But it, it's interesting because when I talk to other players, and they all had this sort of business approach to it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I started and I wanted to meet these people, and I didn't have that. You know, I just played because I liked to play, mm-hmm. and my friends were playing, and it was just sort of a thing. So I didn't, I hadn't processed that sort of business thing in my head. I had never looked at it that way. Um, it was more an art. Uh, yeah. Something you love to I do. I was learning and, and I was experiencing all of this stuff. But Nothing I, about I, making money and th- becoming famous. Didn't even famous think of it. Didn't of even that. think of it. Well, you know, of course, as you, you want to be a rock star, you know. Oh, course, yeah. Everybody yeah, wants yeah, that. Okay. But I didn't think of it in terms of a job, like a business or anything uh-huh. like that. So when I started to do it... Uh, uh, e- even after that point, but at least that was a hard lesson to learn. It was like, mm-hmm. like that was the first gig and the last gig, and I had to, and I had to, I had to face my dad after that. Do too. you remember, like, what did the band leader say? What did he, did he admonish you? Did he uh, say you're never playing in this town again? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. It, I don't think he's. Happened? I don't remember exactly if he said it, but it. The message you felt it. The message came across, and I never got a call uh-huh. uh, again. However, I did meet a guy in that band named Sandy Love, who was a guitar player, uh, and he had his own band, which was which was more of a uh, contemporary stuff, and and so he hired me in his band, and I played with his band for some years uh, uh-huh. out of that. But uh, so that was kind of the as far as working as a musician. I think that was mm-hmm. kind of the beginning I see. of it. So let's let's progress or move forward a little bit more. Um, I understand that uh, I mean all these uh, amazing artists that you've played with that you know I read in your bio. Um, tell me about that and some of the tours and or or some of that and then highlight some um, some key uh, e- either experiences or, or things that you you want to share. It's, it was like a Wow, you know, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm here in <laughs> Copenhagen or Yo, Paris man. or whatever. Oh man, yeah. So um, why don't you share some of those stories? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I've been I've been pretty fortunate um, in Detroit. Uh, I, without going through the whole process, I eventually landed a gig with a guy named Alexander Zanjic, who's a, a flute player from Canada. Uh-huh. But he was, he was, man, he was running Detroit. Probably still does. Really? He was, he was like the cat. He was one of the, <laughs> one of the top bands that was working in that area. And I ended up on that gig. And that was a big deal. Um, it was how I got to play with Bob James and Earl Clue and Kirk Whalum. I met those guys through, I was actually playing with Alexander Zanjic. And mm-hmm. they did gigs together with those guys. And, I see. Um, so... That was sort of the first, uh, that was a big deal. In, in my, that was a big part. And I played with him for seven years. First time I traveled uh, uh, outside of the country, you know, or 
really anywhere playing music. Out of Detroit? Him. Yeah. Or we has to, he gone out of Detroit? He went to, the first place I went was Mexico, actually, believe it or not. Oh. So we went to Mexico. Uh, we did three shows at three different places in Mexico. And Do you remember what they were? Uh, there was a place called Leon. We played in Mexico City. Leon, Mexico City. And I don't remember the other place, but... Uh, Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta. No, it wasn't on the coast, I can tell you that. Oh, okay. It was, yeah, it was not a coastal place. What, but, was it a good experience for you? How, what, it was. It was. I mean, it was just... It was the first... You know, living... The way I came up, living in Detroit... I hadn't been anywhere, and so when you when you kind of grow up like that, you just think everywhere is like where you live. I had no yeah. no outside, so that was kind of the first time getting out and realizing that life was not the same everywhere, and that people weren't yeah. the same. It's different culture. What year was this? Wow. Um, well, it was in the eighties. Um, I don't remember exactly when that happened. We actually did it. We did it a couple times, but. Um, and were you treated well in Mexico? Yeah, uh, pretty well. Yeah, I thought we had a great time. Uh, only thing yeah. I remember is when we were going there, we, we flew into, I think, Mexico City. I don't remember exactly, but wherever we flew into, man, they, they held us at the border, kind of got shook down a little bit. Uh -huh. but, but we had a, 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 a tour manager with us who spoke the language and he kind of mm -hmm. knew the deal. And, yeah. and I think he, you know. He got us through that. I see. Otherwise, it was great. Yeah, we now, when you got to time. Mexico City, did you say, "Wow, this is an amazing city"? Cause it was. It blew my mind. It a lot really of people think you know so Mexico, it, you know, just has you know donkeys and and uh, mariachis and uh, like. <laughs> and, and here's the thing: I had no preconception. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. So it was all just like, wow, you know, looking around and checking. I'm glad you had out. a good experience because. That's my native country. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, Mexico and Mexicans in general have uh, a great affinity to, to be very welcoming and yeah. kind and, and outgoing and just uh, love when, when foreigners come. Mm -hmm. And, and I've found that. And I've obviously been over the years many, many times. Yeah. And it's, it's tops my list as a favorite Well, I'm going to have to country, yeah. bring you back to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, man. I would love that. We do some yeah. venues over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. My God, time flies. time flies. I wish we could keep going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, viewers, please comment because um, I'm still, as you know, this is a brand new channel and I'm struggling with uh, how long to make these interviews. Please comment. Some people are telling me it's a little too long. A few people, most people are telling me it's just about right. And then I have a few people that tell me, no, you should go <laughs> longer. We need a part two. Right, right. You know, for, let, let's just go a little bit longer um, okay. because this inter interview is very interesting. And I know viewers want to know more. I want to know more. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about um, where are you now in your professional career? Uh, we um, we understand that you have uh, a new release, um, your your own song. Mm -hmm. oh, I no, I, that was last year, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Oxygen. Oxygen came out last year. So tell uh, tell us a little bit about that, and then the, the yeah. Next one. Uh, I, I want to just throw a little, little something in too because sure. I, was, oh, I was listening to you read the bio, and, and maybe that was not quite as up to date. But I want to just give a shout out to Brian Simpson, okay. who's a, an artist that I've been working with lately, and. Um, well, there you go. Brian go. Simpson, yeah. <laughs> Just want to mention him because he's, he's been... Who is uh, this cat? He's a, he's a piano player. Uh, he's a great player and a great guy. And he's been uh, sort of... I've been playing this band wow, for, I don't know, maybe five or six years now. At least mm -hmm. on the West Coast dates and stuff like that. Is he out of L.A.? Or? He's in L.A., yeah. Okay. And uh, so I just wanted to mention that because that's been that's a big good. part of my work recently. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure. He'll but yeah, on the on like uh, so last year, uh, 2020, I released my first single as a solo solo artist, and it's called Oxygen. Mm -hmm. And uh, your composition, I wrote that one. Yes, okay. and uh, yeah, so that was that was a that was a big big step and a whole awesome. new whole new adventure, you know. Yeah, and uh, have fun with that. Congratulations! Then, with thank that. you, thank you. And then this year. Uh, released a cover as you mentioned a cover of a jackson song which the jackson's jackson five jackson's band is probably my favorite 
group of all time. Mm -hmm. So pay some homage to them with uh, a cover, uh, This Place Hotel, which is one of their one of their big songs and one of my favorite bass lines, the, the, really? the bass part. I love, I always loved uh -huh. it. And so, uh, so and I understand you're going to play those two tunes for yes, us today? Yes, 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 gladly so, yeah. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, Can't yeah. wait to hear it. Yeah. Well, Nathan, we're out of time. Uh, hopefully, you, you'll be able to come back uh, and we'll do part two. Cool, man. Yeah, what do you think? awesome, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. And, 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 and by the way, man, I've got, I, I've had an opportunity to play with you a few times. So, yeah. That was, that was those were big spots, too. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. But that was fun. Yeah. Fun yeah. and just a pleasure to play with such a great bass player like yeah. you. <laughs>
Nathan, thank you so much you, for man. dropping in. It was such a pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. Glad to be here. Thank you. It was an honor. Yeah. Loved the music. Loved your single. Uh, I can't wait to play it myself. Uh, maybe play a little violin over that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So thank you again. This is Nathan Brown and Diego Mondragon. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Tell Me Your Story. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Take care of yourselves and each other.